Amen. Are you ready to receive the word? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to start with Romans, the 12th chapter, and the second verse, if you would turn there. Romans, the 12th chapter, and the second verse. As you're turning there, let me say this, that it is time to get yourself geared up to read the word of God through in 2016 and begin to make plans, begin to finish up whatever might be in the way so that you can read the Bible through again in 2016. There's never been a more important time for you. And I don't care if you've read it through 73 times, it is time to read it through number 74 because I believe God is going to speak to us and not just through this guy, but through the people of God who are hungry for his word with the spirit of revelation in a way like you've never experienced before in 2016. And so get ready for that. <clears throat> we will be giving out guides, and uh, certainly some of you uh, choose to use that. And however you want to get through it is fine, but God will change your life. How many have read it through before? All right. Raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Made it all the way through the Bible. All right. And how many of you who have your hands raised, it changed your life forever? Just reading the Bible through. Amen. You know what? It doesn't matter if you serve the Lord for 50 years. His word will change you. Hallelujah. Romans, the 12th chapter, and the second verse says this. And be not conformed to this world. Now, I need to stop there for just a moment because if you can't understand that there are different worlds that exist then you're never going to understand the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You see, there is a parallel universe that exists, and it is the realm of the Spirit. There is this world, and then there is another world that coexists at the same time. And so the Word of God said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Somebody say, the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, let me just say this at the onset today, that the vast majority of the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, is in the process, and not just the beginning. They are headlong in the process of being conformed to this world. Not the things of the world to come, not the things of the world of the Spirit, but the vast majority of the church today is right in the process of conforming themselves their doctrine their style of worship the way that they dress the programs that they implement they are conforming to the things of the world and the argument that I hear among pastors as well you got to meet people where they live right however you have a little problem with our brother Paul when he says be not conformed to this world be not conformed to this world. Because you see, when you reach to somebody and you bring yourself to where somebody is, you don't have any power to bring, help them to get where they need to go. All you are is moving to where they are and then trying to minister to them somehow. And so the church of Laodicea is alive and well and gaining members every single day. And they are in the midst of conforming themselves to the things of the world, to what is politically expedient. And you've heard me say this before, but I'll say it again, that I am not impressed at this point with even churches and pastors who are coming along into realizing that God does not uh, have a problem with gay people straight people, transgender people, ethnicities, all of those different things that have been used to divide in the, the years gone by. Listen, it's a wonderful thing if you can go ahead and come to where God wants you to be, but how you get there matters. Amen. And what I see is that the world has made a shift. The Supreme Court has made a shift. And guess what? Here come all those people just like puppy dogs coming behind the things of the world. 
coming behind the Supreme Court, coming behind uh, all of the political uh, figures that are telling this or that and telling them how to think. You know what? The church is more con concerned with political expediency today than they are pleasing the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on. As a matter of fact, the vast majority don't even believe the word of God anymore. And they say things like, well, we take it seriously, but not literally. And so today I'm, I've come to tell you, it's a fact. It's a fact. You just look around, you will see people that used to know how to get a hold of God. People that used to have prayer meetings where they'd get down on their knees or on their faces before God until they came into a, an experience with the Lord and entered into the throne room of God. My Lord, on Wednesday night, we experienced something in this prayer meeting like many had never experienced before. The spirit of intercessory prayer fell upon some folks and they entered into the throne room of God in a different way than they ever had before that's not a common occurrence in the church anymore that's not something that you just go down to the corner church and you hear people listen I've walked by churches in my childhood especially where you couldn't even get up the steps before you heard somebody groaning in the spirit of God and something from deep inside coming forth that was communicating not simply with you know as not not a flowery uh, beautiful prayer but it was it may not have sounded good to the human ear oh but you knew that it was touching the throne of God and it would arrest you spiritually before you could even get in the door of the church. That's not happening in Laodicea. And so there is a great separation that is taking place. But I want you to notice something in this scripture before we move on. Uh, Paul said, don't be conformed to this world. I could not care less what is going on in the world with regard to what God has called me to do. God has called me to move beyond the things of this world. God has called me to preach the truth and to speak the truth in love. God has called me to step into what he is revealing in this day, in this hour, and in this generation. And I've come to tell you that when you step into the revelations that God has called you to preach, Jesus said this, the servant is not greater than the master. He said, if they hated me, guess what? They're going to hate what you're preaching. Preacher today that's listening to me, if the world is approving of the message that you're preaching you better check yourself and get on your face before God because the world isn't going to be in sync with the things of the spirit of God hallelujah and so today uh, I've come to, to show you just a couple of things in this passage and then we're going to move on he said he said don't be conformed to the world but be ye transformed transformed and how does that transformation take place by the renewing of your mind the renewing of your mind I've come today with a pivotal message for somebody's life that will change your life forever if you will hear the word of God today because some of you have been fighting battles that go back 20, 30 years and the battle is still there. It is still alive and you're still fighting the battle. You go up and down with having good days and bad days, good weeks and bad weeks, but still you, it seems that you've not really crossed the threshold into a complete victory over the things that you've been fighting I've come with a word from God that is going to change your life forever if you will receive it today not here but in your spirit but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove look at this part real quick that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, we've spent a lot of time preaching and teaching about the will of God. I preached or taught rather, uh, I believe it was uh, either a three or four part series on how to hear the voice of God. That's available online if you're interested in that. We have spent a lot of time in this church in training and trying to understand how do I hear the voice of the Lord? How do I differentiate uh, what God is speaking from other things uh, that are in my life and in my heart and in my mind? Uh, and here I want you to understand something that the, the word of God is speaking something to us because it said that that there's a way to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God how many want to know what the true perfect good and acceptable will of God is in your life how many want to know that 
Well, if you don't, you're already in trouble. <laughs> if you don't, you're already running from God. And you hear me say just about every week, you can run. <laughs> you can run. All you're going to do is wear yourself out because Jesus knows where you are. And guess what? He can run faster than you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there is no hiding place from the Savior. Hallelujah. And so, but I want you to understand what the Word of God is saying here. He says that you may prove. The word prove is this word in the Greek. It's dakamazo. And it means this. Get ready. Are you ready? It means this. It means to recognize as genuine after careful examination. How many have ever come to a place where you just were convinced somehow that something was the will of God and turned out not so much? I mean, you were convinced. You made decisions based on it. You spoke to other people about it. You just knew that this was the will of God. And then all of a sudden, something proved to you that it wasn't the will of God after all. How many know that God knows the beginning from the end? How many know that he is the author and the finisher of our faith? Hallelujah. And so this is what will allow you get a hold of this today. If we are going to know and recognize after careful examination the will of God, it's going to be preceded by a transformation in your mind. Because your carnal mind is enmity against God. All right. Now, now I'm, I'm framing something up for you that you need to get a hold of. So let's, let's put that part of the, the framework in place. Your carnal mind never will be in sync with God. What is my mind? Well, let me tell you this. The Word of God says that uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs tell us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what does that mean? Does that mean that just the thoughts that I think that that's who I am? We're going to examine that today. But here's what I'm, I need you to understand today is that your mind is in a place of turmoil and in a place that contradicts the things of God. That is your natural state of being. What is my mind? Well, let me tell you this. You know, the Lord has just opened my eyes and some of the people that have uh, been coming to this church, God has been speaking to us that this body is not who I am. This body is not who I am. That's why I get so irritated at people that want to just focus on the things of the flesh. Because the word of God said this, that God does not look on the outward, but God looks on the inward. The word of God says that God is not a respecter of persons. There's not one person that because of the way you look or the way the place that you were born or what your skin color looks like, what your eyes look like, what your sexuality looks like what your gender looks like there's not one person that god cares anything about that not interested you want to march in some kind of parade some kind of pride parade of this or that guess what god thinks you're a big old idiot that's what you're going to be proud of really that's what you're going to be proud of that you sleep with men when other people sleep with women that's what you're going to be proud of that you sleep with this kind of person or that. That's what you're going to be proud of. My God in heaven, how shallow can we be? Or I'm going to get in, in some kind of parade or some kind of demonstration because I happen to have a vehicle with this kind of skin on the outside. This is not who I am. And somebody better open your eyes because you're not going to get where you want to be in eternity until you realize this is a temporary vehicle. This is not who I am. If you think, well, that's obvious, let's just test that hypothesis for a second. <laughs> because uh, when you think, who am I? If you were to sit down and write, who am I? You'd probably say something like, I am a woman. Or I am a man. 
I am transgender. I am gay. I am straight. I am black. I am white. I am Native American. I am whatever the phrase might be for your politically correct uh, sort of ethnicity this week because it's going to change next week. And today, if I say something, it's going to offend somebody and I'm going to be corrected. But my God, we have focused on the outside and God said, I don't care about the outside. It's temporary. I'm living this life just to live again. And one of these days, I'm going to be like him because I shall see him as he is and in the moment in a twinkling of an eye I'm going to be changed and this corruptible must put on incorruptibility and incorruption and this carnal is going to put on the immortal uh, brand new body that is waiting for me somebody wave your hand if you're happy about that this is not who I am if I were to describe somebody, we're testing the hypothesis for a second, all right? If, I, if somebody committed a crime and I saw them fleeing the scene and I wanted to describe who they are, what would I say? Oh, well, that was a woman so high with medium uh, length hair and this color skin and they were wearing this as if that's who they are. Now, I understand that those things help us in catching criminals and describing things. But can, can I help you understand today that this is not who I am and that is not who you are. There is an eternal soul that is living inside of you. And don't buy into the lie that Satan has uh, caused you to believe that this body is who you are one of these days. Uh, you're going to lay this body down, uh, whether it's when the trumpet sounds uh, or whether you're going to uh, lay the body down in death can I tell you that your soul is going to live on in eternity it's not black it's not white it's not gay it's not straight it's not male it's not female are you with me and so come on can we please not be so incredibly shallow sometimes we judge people because of what they look like on the outside but here's what I want you to know today. Your mind, your mind has to be transformed in the Spirit of God if you're to know and recognize the will of God because your mind is enmity against God. It is flesh. Here's the state of things. You have an eternal spirit that is who you really are. Your soul is who you really are and it's going to live on forever one place or another. Amen. But your soul functions through a physical, fleshly brain. All right? If, if you were to walk into an autopsy, and I used to work in a field where I saw a lot of autopsies, where I saw the, the cranial cavity just laid open, and I saw the brain. And you know what? That brain was no longer functioning after that person passed away. And so here's what I've got you to help you understand. See, sometimes when we're super intelligent, we think that that's who we are. Well, that's what differentiates me from everybody else. I'm super intelligent. Sometimes when we have challenges in our physical brain, come on, somebody. Sometimes with, well, Sister Evelyn, you raised your hand, so I'll pick on you. <laughs> I hope I'm as quick and spry as she is when I turn 80, but I've heard a rumor that when you get older that it's a little bit difficult to remember things. I heard a, a rumor. Yeah, did you, did, have you heard that? <laughs> Are you with me? Your brain and your capacity to, to process information is no different than the computer that you have at home and how powerful that thing is. Sometimes it gets hung up. But your, your brain, your physical uh, cogitation is not who you are. You've got a soul that is perfect inside of you that was created with perfection by the hand of the Creator. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, there are people that, that can't receive that scripture sometimes because they look at their body. 
they look at their brain. Hallelujah. Do you know there are people that can't even have a conversation because they're impaired in their physical brain, but they've got a beautiful, perfect soul that is going to live on into eternity inside of them. And so I'm talking about your mind today. And the only way that you're going to be able to function in the realm of the spirit and in the world that God wants you to step into in this day, in this hour, the world and the realm of the spirit is by having a transformation that comes only through the renewing of your mind in the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to get yourself into the presence of the Lord. That's why even when you don't feel like it, when you're stupid brain is saying we're not going to worship God your soul can rise up and say I will bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me not with my brain not with my thinking not with my carnality but my soul is going to bless the name of Jesus regardless of what this vehicle tells me regardless of what's going on in my physical body or mind I've got to have a transformation in order to step into the will of God and to the world of uh, the things of God. Prove means to recognize as genuine after careful examination. What do we examine? The will of God against his word. His word is forever settled in heaven. Listen, my opinions will shift from time to time. My my thinking process will shift from time to time and you know that you're the same way that some of you had opinions that you thought your life hinged upon that that's who I am come on somebody but somehow some way the spirit of God touched you he washed your mind he cleansed your spirit and you came out of that process thinking a little bit differently And so we've got to be renewed. We've got to have our minds renewed. Hallelujah. And that is what helps us to be transformed into the things of God. Hallelujah. Thoughts form ideas. Thoughts form ideas. Ideas turn into actions. You with me? And actions have eternal consequences. I need to go through that one more time. Your thoughts form ideas. And ideas will turn into actions. It's not your thoughts or ideas that will lock in the the eternal consequences, but your actions will. Your actions will. And so that's why the word of God is concerned with our thinking process and what is going on in our thinking. As a matter of fact, 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and the third verse says this. Paul is warning the Corinthian church and he says this. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility or his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so here's what I want to tell you today, that there is a battleground that you have to address before you're going to be any good to help somebody else or to step out and do warfare for anybody else. And it is the battleground of your mind. Hallelujah. But I've come with good news for you. There's a power that God has made available to you that will lift you up and give you power over the things of the flesh and over the battleground of the mind. The enemy doesn't attack just your body the enemy doesn't attack just the people around you the very most favorite place for the enemy to attack you is he wants to corrupt your thinking process and he wants to make the things of God subject to the things of the flesh he wants to bring the principles and the doctrines and the revelations that God is pouring out in your life and he wants to put them through the filter of your old fleshly mind Who is the ultimate authority of what you know and why you know it? Is it because you're convinced with your intellect? Well, being convinced with your intellect doesn't have anything to do with faith. 
And by grace are you saved through faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. But the enemy is trying even this moment to corrupt your mind from the simplicity. Listen, it is not complicated. The things of God are not complicated when you come into a place of saying, Lord, I need a, a transformation by the renewing of my mind. Yesterday, I felt great. Yesterday, I heard from God. Yesterday, I felt an amazing restoration in the presence of God. Yesterday, I was healed from head to toe. Yesterday, he took me up out of the miry clay and he picked me up out of the pit and he removed my depression yesterday he did miracles that nobody else could ever do for me but yesterday is gone every single victory that happened yesterday listen I've built on top of that praise God for it but it's not going to get me through today I've got to be transformed today by the renewing of my mind. Satan will subtly come in uh, again. Listen, if, if you're thinking that Satan, you know, the only way you know it's Satan is if some, you know, red dude with horns comes and stands in front of you and, and then begins to talk to you, then you know it's Satan. Guess what? He's subtle. If a red dude with horns walks into your room or your house, call the police. Because it's not the devil. It's some freak that got in your house. Just a little word of wisdom from your pastor. But the enemy comes in subtly. And he meshes with your fleshly thinking process. He meshes, meshes with your earthly, physical, and carnal intellect. There's nothing wrong with the intellect. There's nothing wrong with your brain. There's nothing wrong with the flesh, per se. God made you the way that you are. But you see, we've got to reach for transformation if we want to step into the things of God. Look at, uh, let's back up to the 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians. And the third verse says this, For though we walk in the flesh. Again, you're walking in the flesh. you got a meat suit. You're walking around in a meat suit. That meat suit is not who you are. That meat suit is decaying right on your frame. I know that's disgusting, but it's true. It is decaying right on your frame. And one of these days, it's going to quit working altogether. One of these days. One of these days. But you see, we've, we've got to walk in the flesh because that's where we have been appointed to prove ourselves. Come on, somebody. Your immortal soul has been placed in this vehicle so that you could breathe oxygen and walk on this earth and go through a training ground and walk through some things that will set you up for eternity. But you better be careful not to fall in love with this meat suit or fall in love with this world or fall in love with the things. Here's why. The word of God says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because we're destined for greater things. Hallelujah. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. I'm just a visitor. I'm just a pilgrim. I'm just a, a short timer in this world. And the word of God said that this world, is, this, this life is nothing but a vapor. Now put that in perspective today in your life. How much energy on a day-to-day -day basis are you focusing on a vapor? Some of you spent all last week worrying over something that may or may not happen. Come on, you know it's true. There was an author in the 19th century. His name is... Arthur Summers Roach, and he said this, Worry is a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. 
And so I've come to tell you that the enemy will use different techniques on your mind to bring you away from God. Brother John Hagee put it this way. He said, when worry comes knocking at your door, send faith to answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you know what's going to happen? Worry is going to turn around and take a hike when faith comes answering the door. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that faith is the substance of things hoped for? It is the evidence of things not seen. And faith is not going to happen as long as you're walking in the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Don't raise your hand, but how many have been trying to do some warfare according to the things of the flesh recently? How many have been, don't raise your hands. How many have been going to work and trying to strategize and figure out how you can make things better in the flesh because of situations that you're facing? How many have family situations or, or relationship issues or financial issues and all you've been doing is trying to fight that battle in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. Verse 4 says this, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's why we don't battle in the flesh because we don't have weapons that are, uh, that are designed for the things of the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now this is going to get good in just a second here because you and I love to talk about pulling down strongholds strongholds. You and I love to talk about this giant is coming down. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. We get up and we shout and we dance and we run and we just act like crazy people when we talk about giants coming down. But I wonder if we have correctly identified what those giants are. Because the word says this, that the, the, the weapons that God has given to us are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Do you understand now why even though we walk in the flesh, we've got to make the trip, make the journey into the realm of the spirit before we start doing battle. Because your weapons are not going to do any good until you step into the place where you can put on not the armor of the flesh, not a witty uh, response to somebody telling you off not something that is going to really wreck somebody when you, you flat out tell them off and put them in their place. I come from a community that wants to just get it told. Just tell everyone off all the time. Don't look at me. You know what I'm saying. Well, you can look at me, but don't look at me like that. How's that? But that's not going to get the job done. How many times, just a rough percentage, that you flat told someone off and got it told, do you think that person thought, mm, I want what they have? I want to find out where they go to church. Mm, they just got, they told me off. I just, I couldn't, I was spitting and sputtering. I didn't know, have any words left. I wonder if they know Jesus. I just felt something. Yeah, I know. It's sinking in, isn't it? Hallelujah. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here's what the word said. It said that there are strongholds that will come down when you step into the realm of the spirit. The battleground is the mind. And here's what we've got to, to understand here. In the very next verse, it is defined for you. Let's read this again. Verse 4 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Don't stand up and try to use even your spiritual weapons except you use them through God because they are mighty through through God to the pulling down of strongholds and what pray tell are the strongholds that the word of God is talking to us about casting down imaginations what are imaginations it's something we got to cast down well we know that much no one loves me 
God isn't real. I'll never make it through this. That doesn't work for me. That scripture's for somebody else. God doesn't care anymore. You know how I know these are imaginations? Because they're contradictory to the word of God that is forever settled in heaven. You see, we've got to examine the truth of the word of God and we've got to compare with the truth of the word of God. We've got to cast down uh, imaginations. Uh, we've got to, uh, what, what does it say after that? It says, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Well, what is every high thing? I'm talking about strongholds, church. Uh, I'm talking about pulling down strongholds uh, and this is what is going to happen uh, when you begin to step into the realm of the spirit uh, and do spiritual warfare with the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal but mighty through God and the reason that they're mighty through God is for the pulling down of strongholds imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. What is every high thing? It's every single person that has the audacity to, uh, to contradict the word of God. I don't care who it is. It's every political ideology that has the audacity to come into contradiction to the word of God. It's every religious figure, every pastor, every Sunday school teacher, every individual that has the audacity to contradict the things of the word of God I'm telling you it's time to pull down every imagination and every high thing that says I'm going to come against the things of the word of God the word is forever settled in heaven Jesus said heaven and earth are going to pass away oh but my word will never pass away it's forever settled in heaven and then what do we have to deal with finally it says, in bringing into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, listen, I know that we have varying uh, levels of, uh, you know, confidence on our, in our own selves and our own thinking. Some of us are insecure. Some of us are overly secure. Some of us think more of ourselves than we ought to. By the way, the Bible says that a man shouldn't think more of himself than he ought to. He ought to be careful about that. But by the same token, when we come into a place of complete insecurity, then we are contradicting the word of God that says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we are contradicting the fact that God has a plan for your life. That he created you with purpose and he made you with a pathway before you. He said, I know the thoughts that I think for you and toward you. He said, I'm watching over my word to perform it. Hallelujah. And so we better be careful of the thoughts that we think. There's a, an interesting uh, uh, phrase in scripture when it's speaking of spiritual warfare and it uh, talks about gird up your loins. And what does that mean? It, mean? it means put on the armor of God. Get yourself outfitted and suited up. Get yourself in a position where you're going to have some protection. Gird up your loins. It means put on the, the armor. Put on the things that are going going to allow you to do spiritual warfare but first Peter 1 and 13 says something even more interesting Peter said this gird up the loins of your mind gird up the loins of your mind because the primary battleground is right here between your lovely ears right here and if you can't get that battle won, you're not any good for anybody else. Are you hearing me today? You see, because I take joy in pulling back the curtain. The stupid devil is behind that curtain trying to hide, trying to be subtle, trying to, trying to trick you every way that he can. But today, I know that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Somebody say amen. 
Gird up the loins of your mind. Your soul functions through carnality, through a fleshly brain, but you don't have to stay in the flesh. You can rise above the things of the flesh. We need to discern where our thoughts are coming from because not every thought is directly from the throne of God. Somebody hear me today. The reason that we've got to bring into captivity every thought, that's, that's kind of a, a really intense term, isn't it? Bring my thoughts into captivity. That doesn't, he didn't say just restrain them a little bit and just, you know, be careful. No, he said lock them up. Lock them up. Because the source of your thoughts is what we have got to focus on. The source of our own thoughts. I've come to tell you something. The devil cannot read your mind. He can't read your mind. And so the thoughts that you're thinking that are from God or from yourself, he has no access. But I will tell you this, that satanic influences and spirits that work for Satan and Satan himself can speak to you in your thoughts and give you thoughts that will become ideas and turn into actions that will cause your eternity to be changed forever. And so we had better be careful of the source of our thoughts, the thoughts that come in from the enemy are never going to agree with the word of God. The thoughts that come in from our flesh are never going to be in sync with the word of God. And some of us think that our thoughts are sacred. Number one, Satan can't read your thoughts, but God can. God knows what you're thinking, and so you better guard your thoughts. If you ever thought, I need to be careful of my, uh, of my uh, conversation... You know, the the word of God says we need to be holy in our conversation, in all manner of conversation. Amen. If you read the Bible through, you would know that. And when Brother Nate taught last year sometime, I believe it was, uh, he began to talk about the Lord listening to your conversations at home. Hear me today. The devil can't read your mind but he can hear your conversations. He can hear your words of despair and doubt. Be careful what you speak. Be careful. Listen, some of you don't have an unexpressed thought in your head. But you can take dominion over that. There's deliverance for you. There there are some more graphic terms for those kind of people, but I'm not going to get into that. And so, listen, be careful what you put into words because words have the power. Your tongue has the power of life and death. Your words will cause things to be set in action that lead to life or can lead to death. Come on, somebody get with me today. I'm preaching the word of God that is going to change somebody today. Listen, if you can get a hold of the battleground of your mind, once you get a hold of the power that is available to you, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty come on somebody they are mighty through God to the pulling down of imaginations and every high thing and everybody every person every thought every ideology that exalts itself against the things of God and I'm going to lock up every thought. I'm going to evaluate every thought. Here's what I've come to tell the people of God. This will bring deliverance to your life like nothing else. Take responsibility for the thoughts that come into your mind and into your heart. Take responsibility and delineate the source from which they came. Hallelujah. And when you identify a thought that is contradictory to the word of God, cast it down in Jesus' name. Let me tell you what I've begun to do lately. Because if you think that this this man here is just so holy and righteous that I never have thoughts that contradict the word of God, then you don't really know how things work. Because when uh, when a man or a woman steps into a place, they they say, okay, God, hallelujah, I'm ready for the ministry. I've been called. And God says, here you go. Here's your mantle. And it's got the biggest old bullseye on the back of it. The biggest bullseye you've ever seen right on the back, right on the back. 
And if you think the enemy isn't going to come in to this man's thoughts, but you know what I do? When I identify a thought, I take responsibility for that thought. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against the enemy. You can stand up and you can say, I pull down that stronghold in the name of Jesus. I literally rebuke my thoughts sometimes in the name of Jesus and cast them out because it's a thought that is contradictory to the knowledge of Christ it is a thought that is not in obedience to Christ and we found out that obedience is better than sacrifice here's what we've got to know that idea will never be formed if you stand up and plead the blood of Jesus over the thoughts that came from your carnality or came from the enemy I've come to tell somebody there's victory you don't have to be like a lamb to the slaughter for your thought life there's power in the name of Jesus you can have a breakthrough when depression sets in I found out I don't have to put up with it when some kind of disappointment comes in I don't have to let that thing just take me out and hope that somebody's going to pick me up and pray for me I can stand up and say in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost I have victory and I command every thought to come into captivity and to come down and bow and to the name that is above every name there's power in the blood of Jesus and I've got to open up my thought life to the power of Jesus I've got to open up my thought process to the blood of Jesus and plead the blood over the battleground of my mind hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. We've got to discern where the thoughts are coming from. Take responsibility and then take action. Because the word of God said in James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God and resist. Resist. That's not something God does for you. Come on. You've got to resist. But that's all you've got to do. You don't have to run in circles. Listen, if I thought I had to run in circles and flap my arms like they were wings and sing, you are my sunshine, to get rid of the devil, you know what I'd do? I'd start singing and flapping. But you don't have to do all that. I don't know. I've never tried it. It might help. All... <laughs> All you have to do is resist. Are you hearing me today? The devil has no power over you. The blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled, Jesus' name, people of God, he has no power over you. When you just wake up, open up your eyes and say, I'm not standing for it anymore. And begin to resist. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Satan hates your praise. Come on, somebody. I said he hates your worship. When you begin to say, I don't feel like it. In fact, JJ, this may be the worst day of my life. This may be the most uh, difficult time or difficult thing that I've ever done. But still, I need a victory. And so I'm going to begin a transformation of my mind and my thinking by worshiping the Lord. Suddenly, the gate are going to open as I begin to offer my thanksgiving to the Lord. I'm going to enter his gates. And then when I begin to praise him, even in my trial, even in my sickness, even in my circumstance, when I begin to praise the Lord for everything I've got and offer the sacrifice of praise. That's why we were doing what we were doing earlier in the service because it's going to cost you something when you praise the Lord properly. He's seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth and Satan hates it he can't stay around he's paralyzed he has to shut up he has to turn around and take a hack and run for the hills when you begin to worship God in spirit and in truth it's going to transform you it's going to renew you and your mind will take a turn and enter into the place where God can speak to you 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. And one of the greatest weapons that I've ever found as I step into warfare is my worship. When you look at example after example in the Old Testament, you find that the worshipers were put on the front line. Well, wouldn't it make a lot more sense to put the, the great warriors? No, the worshipers were out on the front lines. Hallelujah. Worship will drive the enemy out of his mind. He hates it. He can't abide it. And so I've come to tell you that there is victory when you begin to take dominion. Hallelujah. Over your thoughts and over your worship. When you begin to enter into the realm of the spirit through the gateway of worship. Philippians, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse says this. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. That means it's supernatural because your wonderful high intellect can't somehow grasp it. <laughs> all of your degrees and all of your wonderful experience, this is beyond you. I don't care how smart you are, you're never going to understand it. You hearing me? The peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep. That means Solomon couldn't understand it. That means the smartest and most learned individuals on the face of the earth could not understand the peace that is being spoken of here. The peace that passes understanding is going to keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. It's great to have a breakthrough. Oh, but listen, it's even better when you can stay in a place where you're in the presence of the Lord. Every morning you get up and you say, Lord, I'm going to worship you. Thank you for a brand new mercy. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new day. Thank you for uh, a breath in my lungs today. Thank you, Lord, that I've got blood pulsing through my veins today. Somebody didn't wake up today, but thank you, Lord, that you gave me one more day to serve you. Listen, when I can keep my mind in a place, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus hallelujah there's a benefit to somebody that knows how to bring your mind into subjection to the things of God he said the peace of God which passes understanding is going to keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus we have such a deficit of peace in the church today at large the people that come through the doors of the pastor's offices are in a place of turmoil and torment and anything but a place of peace that passes understanding but it is the peace of God that is the keeping force that is going to keep you where you need to be and here's what the word of God said you've got to you've got to come into a place where you you accept his peace how many know that he is the prince of peace hallelujah peace is so crucial it is not a luxury it is not something that we can just do with or do without it is not something that we aspire or two and maybe if we get holy enough or pray enough then I'm going to find peace I come to tell you that he became our peace when he died on the cross he said I want peace to reign inside of you that means peace is forcefully going to lead you and guide you peace is necessary if you're going to walk in the things of God because peace will keep your hearts and minds. What does the word keep mean? It is the Greek word phrorio, and it means to guard, protect from hostile invasion. To guard and protect from hostile invasion. If you think the enemy isn't trying to break down the, the gates and the walls of your mind. Amen? Huh. But there's a peace that passes understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Ty, when your body's in pain and when it seems like your last hope is gone, there's a peace that is supernatural that is going to keep your heart and your mind. When loved ones are sick in the bed and the doctor said they're not going to get well, you can walk in a peace that passes any kind of understanding in the flesh. It passes understanding and that is what is necessary necessary to keep your heart and your mind it will literally guard your heart it will literally guard your mind and keep your thoughts in a subjection and into obedience
obedience to the knowledge of Christ. And the peace is available to you. Verse 8 says, finally, brethren, let's wrap this idea up. <laughs> he said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. You see, we have a role to play in the process of our thought life. Whatsoever things are true. Did you just receive that story without knowing whether it was true? And run with it. Because it was like gasoline. Come on, somebody. That person that you don't particularly like that much, you heard something. You don't know whether it's true or not, but you sure want it to be. And so you went running with it. That's not what the Word of God says. It says, whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. That includes being honest with yourself. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. When's the last time you put that filter on your thought life? I'm going to think lovely thoughts today. <laughs> lovely thoughts. Today is my lovely thought day. Negativity, you're banned for today. I'm going to think lovely thoughts. Yeah, that's, that's not some freaky weird thing. That's the word of God. Whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report did you know it's not your job to give an evil report i'm i need to look everyone in the eye if i could look myself in the eye I'd do that too it is not your job to deliver an evil report whatsoever things are of a good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise hallelujah think on these things think is not a passive term folks this doesn't mean just sit in the easy chair and just just let the thoughts wash over you if you want to win the battle of your mind you got to begin to stand in the authority of Jesus name You've got to begin to wash your thoughts in the blood of Jesus. And the word said, here's your guide. Think on these things. Make a choice. Make a decision. You are going to have a breakthrough if you simply put these concepts of the word of God into practice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand this, your thoughts are not who you are today. Stand with me, church. Your thoughts are not who you are. But you can take dominion today. Hallelujah. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One more scripture that I just have to get in here. Romans 14, 17 says this, Basilea, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace if you want to walk into Basilea if you want to be in the power of the kingdom of God then you're going to have to walk into it through peace and once you do folks you're going to have joy in the Holy Ghost hallelujah listen to me today I've never said anything more important to you in the history of this church I've never said anything more crucial to your life than I'm about to say right now you need to compare every decision to how much peace you have in the Spirit of God if you think something is the will of God how much peace do you have about it God may be speaking to you to, to do one of the hardest things you've ever had to do, but I will tell you this. If it's God, you're going to have peace that passes understanding. Not fear. Not worry. It's time to bring every thought into captivity to the knowledge of Christ. 
And today it's time to make a commitment. I refuse to move one step until I have peace. I refuse to make one step or to make one more decision in my life until I have the peace of God that passes understanding. Are you hearing me today? I'm preaching about taking dominion over the battleground. You see, it is so important. If you want to have victory, it's so important where to know where the enemy is going to hit you. Wouldn't you rather know where the attack is coming? Amen. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah.